beauty of your holiness. set them up at the coffee table, but today I'm just going to set them up in the chairs so you can kind of see them. And I stood before the couch, and I began to preach. <laughs> and man, did I preach. And I preached salvation. We had a salvation meeting. And at the end of that, they all came forward <laughs> to the altar. And they got saved. And as was usual at those salvation meetings, they gave testimonies. And then I put them away. I thought I was a great preacher. But I wasn't as good as I thought I was because the next day I got them out, preached, and they all got saved again. <laughs> it was wonderful for me because I was an officer's child and at that time assistants lived with us. I was really lucky because that wonderful lieutenant lived with me. I thought I was very special. All I wanted to do with my life was to grow up and be commissioned as a Salvation Army lieutenant, single lieutenant, <laughs> because everybody loved that single lieutenant. All the young people loved him, just couldn't get enough of her. And I thought that was the most special thing in the world to be. That's what I wanted to be. Commissioned a single lieutenant in the Salvation Army so I could preach the good news about Jesus Christ. Well, that didn't happen. I went to the training college and I was commissioned, but I wasn't no single lieutenant. <laughs> I had Don Faulkner and two kids, <laughs> but I was commissioned to go and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what we did, all four of us. Because if you talk to my daughter, she will say, when we were commissioned, she's never been commissioned in her life, as far as the Salvation Army is concerned. But she's commissioned. And each one of you who has accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord have been commissioned too. And we're going to talk about that this morning. The scripture for today just simply says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority has in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And doing what? teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always. And the one Bible that I used to read said, even unto the ends of the earth. But I am with you always to the very end of the age. And that is very true. And we're going to look at that 
today. I want to thank Captains Bell for allowing me this privilege, and it is a privilege, to stand behind this sacred desk, and I don't take it lightly. Join me in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, may your words flow from your holy book to our seeking hearts and teach us to live according to your commission. In your son's name, amen. On Thursday evenings at the ARC, Don and I go to a very special meeting. It's called Celebrate Recovery, and we love it. Right, guys? It's a great meeting. And the men there, if they're very lucky, some don't get to go to my class. Things happen. But some of them get to come to my class in level one, and I teach them how to be politically correct. And in there, we kind of share about our addictions. Guys, what is my addiction? There it is. The whole world knows. Tom, you're not the only one. I am addicted to caffeine, and I share it with the men. And some of them have even had the, I don't know if it's gall or courage, to pick it up off of my desk and pour it right down in front of me in the water fountain. Just pour it away, and I have to watch it. Leave me. But they know that I am addicted because it's got caffeine in it. So Celebrate Recovery is for me. It's for anybody that has hurts, hang-ups, and habits. And that's everybody in this room. Well, Coke. We're going to talk about Coke for a minute. I love Coke. I would make a good commercial for Coke. In 1886, Coke was introduced in Atlanta, Georgia. Coke today has been spread around the world. 97% of the world has heard of Coca-Cola. From 1886, 97% of the world has heard of Coca-Cola. All due to the fact that the company years ago made a commitment that everyone on the planet would have a taste of their soft drink. It was the goal of that company to see that the world knows about Coke, understands how good it is, and it doesn't matter whether it's Coke, Diet Coke, Coke Zero, doesn't matter, just so it's Coke. In our scripture chosen for today, starting with verse 18, in one of the last statements given by Christ to his 11 faithful disciples, we can see three statements that I hope we can remember when we leave here today. And I've written three words in my Bible. And those three words are this, claim, commission, and communion. The claim that Christ made is found in the first part of verse 18. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. He made that claim. You know, he had the authority to teach, and that's found in chapter 7, verse 29. The authority to heal, that's found in chapter 8, the first 13 verses. And he had the authority to forgive, chapter 9, verse 6. He had all of that. But when he died on the cross and rose from the dead, that's when he had all authority. 
That's when God gave him all authority. And at that point, he says, he gives it to us. He gives it, he gives it to us, and we get to share that. Have you ever thought about that? The authority of Christ he gives to us as his children, and we get to share that. Excuse me for just a minute. I'm going to put a tic-tac in my mouth. I take medicine that dries my mouth. So I have to do that occasionally. Coke has a mission, but we have a commission. It's given to us. And once we have accepted Jesus as our Savior and Lord, we have a commission to go and make disciples. How many disciples have you made? I've thought about that. As a Salvation Army officer, I've seen a lot of people saved at the altar. I don't know that I've discipled many. I've used the excuse. Many times we move too fast to disciple people. We're only there two years. Some of them don't get saved till they're 18 months. Only there six months to really do something with them. But I feel I have failed in the discipling of people. I don't know about you, but I feel I have failed in that part of what Christ has called me to do. And as I looked at this verse, these verses, but especially this verse, and thought about it, I don't think it matters whether a, we're a brand new convert or whether a, we're a commissioner that's been on the road for 80 years. I think we need to stop and look at that and think about, are we discipling people? Because that's what Christ has called us to do. We're to teach all that we know. Are we doing that? Poor cadets, are you doing that? How many of your friends are you teaching them all that you know about Jesus? Candidates, how many of your friends are you teaching all that you know about Jesus? You see, it doesn't start when you sign the court cadet application. It doesn't start when you sign the candidate's application. All of this starts when you kneel at the altar and accept him as your Lord. That's when it begins. Unless you're like me. And then you have to stop and think, have I done what he's called me to do? It's my desire, more than anything in the world, that every man that comes to my office for counseling will know who Jesus is. Who's on my counseling list? Do you know who Jesus is? That's my desire, because that's what I'm commanded to do. But not just them, it's everybody. Everybody that I know. And it's that way for all of us. And that's not me telling you that. That's Matthew 28 telling us that. And that's why we need to look at it. That's the commission that we need to have. And you know, we don't need to go into all the world because all the world is coming to America. Look at your neighbors. Who are they? They're probably from somewhere else. And you can teach them how to speak English so that they know what you're talking about. God is bringing America to our doorstep. As of 2013, only 75% of the world 
has heard of Christ. We're not doing as good as Coke. And you might say, well, we only started out with 11 people. Well, do you know how many people discovered Coke? One man. And he just hired two or three people to get started. And now, 97% of the world knows about Coke. We should be challenged to share the message of forgiveness of sins in Jesus Christ. And to help us, the Southern Territory, God bless them, has a mission statement written by the cabinet and the divisional commanders under the leadership of then territorial commander, Philip Needham. And it says this, Salvationists of the USA Southern Territory are answering God's call to make radical followers of Jesus Christ who love inclusively, serve helpfully, and disciple effectively in the communities where they live. Are we doing that? I would say yes as a core, because the men from the center love to come here. They feel welcome. You love inclusively. You definitely do. And you serve helpfully. Yes, you definitely do. Do you disciple effectively? Are you teaching all that you know about Jesus Christ to others? Being commissioned and ordained as a Salvation Army officer is a very special event in the life of a person called by the Lord to serve him in this way. And there are many people in this congregation who would stand up and testify and share that experience if they were called to do so. And they would be proud to share it. But the thing is, once we have accepted Christ as Savior and Lord, he, co he commissions all of us. And we all need to be about the business of making disciples and teaching them what Christ has taught us. On this Corps Cadet and Candidate Sunday, I believe we are commissioned. And we're commissioned to begin this as soon as we are called to love and serve the Lord. And when we make a decision to join a church, we need to be fruitful and already begin making disciples and teaching them God's word. And how do we get the strength and courage to do that? We're just clay vessels. Well, we get that when we seek the communion that he offers. And he states that in the last part where he says, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. A little three-year-old boy wanted to learn how to tie his shoes. And he got so frustrated, he kept trying and trying, and he couldn't. And finally, one day, he was able to tie his shoes. He was so excited. His mother was so excited. But he wasn't excited at all. So finally, she said to him, Ronnie, why are you not excited? You've been trying and trying to tie your shoes, and I thought when you finally learned how, you'd be so bubbly I couldn't stand you. And he said, well, Mom, it's this way. I just finally realized, now that I know how to tie my shoes, i got to do it for the rest of my life. <laughs> you know, we get really excited when we first know the Lord. And we just want to read his word and study and know more about him. And that communion with him is so wonderful. I can hardly stand it when I get my Holy Ghost goosebumps. But you know, after a while, it gets to be, well, I don't have time to read all my devotions today. Or I don't have time to read 
to do my regular prayer time. So, okay, Lord, you know who I'm praying for, so you take care of it. And we just kind of drift away from it, and we don't do what we normally do. Next day, we just don't read the Scripture, and finally, we've drifted away. We're not tying our shoes anymore. We're stumbling over them. That communion with the Lord is very important, and we need that to go on with Him. Very important that we do that. If the management and workers at Coca-Cola can make their product get taken around the world, all of us can make certain that everyone we know hears about Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, and I would not begin to say what you should do, but for me, I look at this where he says in his word, and I've got it highlighted in yellow and underlined in green. Therefore, go. To me, that's not just a commission. It's a commandment. And it's something I want to do because I think God's depending on me. How about you? Are you obeying him? Are you sure that you're doing his will? I'm not so sure that I have done his will, but I want to do it. You might want to join me. Don and I, at our retirement, signed our officer's covenant one more time because it says in there, our desire is to win souls for Christ. And that didn't stop when our officership ended, our active officership. That's still our desire. I want to be a disciple maker for Jesus Christ. Maybe you do too. Maybe you want to say to him one more time, all that I am, all I can be, all that I have, all that is me, accept and use, Lord, as you would choose, Lord, right now, today. Take all my passion, all my dreams, take all my dreams and bend them to your will, because that's what I want. My all I give, Lord, for you I live, Lord. Come, what I have. The altar is open. God's word has been preached. The commission has been given. And the Holy Spirit is here to commune with you. Join me in singing. And if God is speaking to you, Please come. And my dolls have listened. Oh.